is Win News. Tonight, a Gippsland man cleared of causing the deadly Aberfeldy bushfire. Part of the Hazelwood fire declared safe, as more is revealed about an inquiry. And the Morwell Town Common in for a revamp. Good evening, I'm Bruce Roberts. Also tonight, cattle arrives in the Wanangatta Valley ahead of a grazing trial. A Gippsland man has expressed his relief after being cleared of any responsibility for last year's catastrophic Aberfeldy bushfire, which claimed the life of a man at Seaton. However, 76-year-old Graham Ernest Code was convicted and fined for lighting a fire without a permit. Graham Code pleaded guilty to lighting a fire without a permit on his property on January 17 last year, a day of total fire ban in all other districts. But he pleaded not guilty to the charge of leaving the fire and not taking all reasonable precautions to prevent its spread. After a lengthy court process, Magistrate Peter Mallett said he was satisfied Mr Code was guilty of the second charge. I do not find it reasonable that an adult left a 13-year-old responsible for a fire. But Magistrate Peter Mallett said he couldn't be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that the fire Mr Code started spread to cause the catastrophic Aberfeldy bushfire, which went on to destroy property and claimed the life of a man at Seaton. I have a doubt that the fire lit by Mr Code spread into the bigger fire. Mr Mallett also dismissed the defence theory that aerial ignition started the fire. Instead, he praised the professionalism of fire fighters during what was a frightening and catastrophic event. I am more than satisfied that everything that could be done was done to stop that fire. In sentencing, Magistrate Malice took into account Mr Code's good character as a former counsellor, celebrant and school teacher, as well as his contribution to the community. While he also considered the emotional and financial impact the fire and the court process has had on the Codes, who have been ostracised by the community. Graham Code was convicted and fined $2,500 for what Mr Malice described as lighting a fire in circumstances where a fire should never have been lit. You do not get complacent around fires, he said. Outside the court, Linda Code said she was disappointed her husband wasn't acquitted. Thank you. We're very relieved. Mr Code, are you? And, you I'd like, and I'd like to thank too the people of Gippsland who gave us just so much support. Brooke Van Newton, Win News. After 40 days of intensive firefighting, authorities have declared the fire in the northern batters of the Hazelwood mine as safe. And Victoria's Fire Services Commissioner says the remainder of the fire could be extinguished by as early as next week. At the height of the mine fire, hundreds of Morwell school children were relocated. This morning they were part of the welcome party as fire authorities celebrated a milestone. 40 days, 40 nights, but we are able to say the fire in the northern batters is out, not only controlled, it is out. While some residual smoke still rose from the mine today, the northern part has now been handed back to GDF sewers. The northern batters is the area that had the biggest impact on Morwell. When it was on fire, it produced uh, not only smoke, it produced ash and dust that was put over particularly the southern part of Morwell. That leaves sections of the southern batters and mine floor to go, but authorities hope to declare those areas safe by the start of next week. And the fire scar known as Old Faithful, which has been smouldering underground since the 70s, is also in good shape. It's one of those things that's been monitored for 30 years. Uh, it's been reassessed, it's been recapped and no doubt it'll, it'll continue to be monitored. Um, probably for the next 30 years. Today also saw a one-stop shop open in Hazelwood Road to help Morwell residents returning to their homes. It's going to be a huge cleaner, but um, I'll be, it'll be great to see it gone. Louisa Cardillo is among those planning to take advantage of free cleaning kits and high-powered vacuums. My garage is absolutely terrible, so there's just ash. I've got a brown couch in there and it's just covered in ash, it's just white. This weekend we'll also see firefighters from interstate start to demobilise and head home. Close to 1,000 personnel from five other states have helped to battle the blaze over the past five weeks. They've been critical to the whole thing and I think it's important to recognise that uh, not every day we have national um, events like this. Tom Kelly, Win News. Meanwhile, the state government has released the terms of reference for an independent inquiry into the Hazelwood mine fire. Two high-profile leaders have been appointed to assist the Honourable Bernard Teague with the in-depth investigation. 
Former Chief Health Officer John Catford and lawyer Sonia Petering will assist in the mammoth task of investigating, reporting on and making recommendations from the Hazelwood mine fire. Essentially, the terms of a Royal Commission have been applied to this Board of Inquiry. The State Government has released its terms of reference for the inquiry. They include the origin and circumstances of the fire, including how it spread into the mine and the preventative measures taken by its owner, GDF Sewers. I think it's very important we go into this inquiry on a basis that uh, anything and everything ought properly be on the table and uh, those issues I'm sure will be the subject of, uh, of close examination. The response of emergency services will also go under the microscope. Various agencies including Victoria Police will be called to give evidence. It will be left to the inquiry board to decide whether the public will be given the chance to have its say. What's important is a set of terms of reference that deliver a public inquiry that's full and frank and done in the open. That's what the people of Morwell need, not a few vacuum cleaners. I'd anticipate that with the Secretariat established here in Morwell, uh, there will be uh, the uh, uh, appropriate initiatives taken to ensure that submissions are able to be made by the general public. The inquiry's final report will be handed to the government by the end of August. Alexandria Zadzimakis, Win News. The state government has finalised the details of a judicial inquiry into the Hazelwood coal mine fire. Inquiry Chief Bernard Teague will be assisted by public health expert Professor John Catford and corporate lawyer Sonia Petering. It will inquire into the origin of the fire, the actions of the mine owner, the emergency and public health response and the regulation of the mine. The government says it's up to Mr Teague to decide who appears before the inquiry and if it'll be open to the public. I think the inquiry will be conducted uh, certainly in the public hearing sense, uh, very substantially if not completely here in Morwell. Uh, so there'll be ample opportunity for local input from those who are called to give evidence. The fire on the northern side of the mine is now extinguished after burning for 40 days. A Victorian man has been cleared of responsibility over a deadly bushfire in the state's southeast last year. 76-year-old Graham Code lit a paper fire at his property the day the Aberfeldy blaze started. He was accused of starting the catastrophic, catastrophic fire that killed an 84-year-old man. But today a magistrate said he wasn't convinced beyond reasonable doubt that Mr Code's fire sparked the fatal blaze. The court heard Graham Code's good character was tarnished when he was accused of starting the Aberfeldy bushfire. Now his name's been cleared. We feel very vindicated because the fire that was on Graham's property and on our property has not caused the Aberfeldy fire and we feel really pleased about that because we've known that all along. The Aberfeldy fire caused catastrophic damage to the nearby towns of Seaton and Hayfield. An 84-year-old man was killed, 22 homes destroyed and 80,000 hectares of land damaged. On the day the fire started, Mr Code burnt paper in an outside fireplace on his land. He hosed it down, but it jumped and spread. However, the magistrate ruled it couldn't be proven beyond reasonable doubt that it was the fire that sparked the fatal blaze. But the magistrate said, given the constant threat of catastrophic bushfires, the fire should never have been lit. It's as simple as that. Mr Code was convicted and fined $2,500 for lighting a fire without a permit and not taking reasonable care to stop it spreading. The 76-year-old spent three days in custody after his arrest. His lawyer told the court many in the community ostracised him, his property was seized and his work as a marriage celebrant dried up. Yet he remains grateful to many. And I'd like to thank too the people of Gippsland who gave us just so much support and it meant a great deal. Mr Code said he doesn't have any worries about returning home. Sarah Farnsworth, ABC News, Melbourne. The state government has unveiled the terms of reference for the inquiry into the Hazelwood mine fire with a three-member panel to investigate the cause and the response from emergency services, government and the mine's owner. With the firefighting effort winding down, today local school children were given the chance to inspect the helicopters used to bring the blaze under control. 40 days, 40 nights, but we are able to say the fire in the northern batters is out. Not only controlled, it is out. The inquiry panel is due to report back by August. 
The Hazelwood Mine Fire Inquiry has been granted broad powers to investigate the disaster. Deputy Premier Peter Ryan says anything and everything is open to examination, including the government's response to the incident. Morewell South residents were given the all clear to return to their homes this week, but some, like David Wade's, aren't fit to live in. It's an ashtray. It's an absolute ashtray. I'm waiting still for insurance to, to help me clean up the place. After 40 days, the fire on the northern edge of the mine closest to homes is finally out, but hot spots remain. This is, we believe, one of the biggest brown coal open cut fires in the world. The government has given the inquiry powers of investigation similar to a royal commission. It will examine the circumstances of the fire, the emergency response and the support provided to the local community. It will also investigate the role played by the owner and operator of the mine. I think it's very important we go into this inquiry on a basis that uh, anything and everything ought properly be on the table. It's a complex event. It's something we don't always have. Uh, it's good to look and learn. Mine operator GDF Sewers say they will cooperate. Residents hope one of the key outcomes of the inquiry will be better fire prevention here at the mine site to protect the community from a similar disaster unfolding in the future. The feeling is still quite... Uh quite angry. I mean, obviously everyone's relieved that the smoke's virtually gone. Firefighters expect to black out the remaining hotspots at the mine next week, but the celebrations have started early, with Morwell students treated to an impressive display this morning. Awesome! As the smoke disappears over Morwell, the message to firefighters is clear. They've done a wonderful job. A report will be provided to Parliament in August. Matt Gallant, 10 Eyewitness News.